one of the areas that a lot of people struggle with is, will God heal me? Uh, is it God's will for me to be healed? When Jesus died on that cross, not only did He give you eternal life, He also gave us healing. He paid for our help so we could live in the divine life of God. Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. We are having a look at a very powerful subject. It is one of my favorite subjects, knowing that when Jesus died on that cross, not only did He give you eternal life, He also gave us healing. He paid for our health so we could live in the divine life of God. And one of the areas that a lot of people struggle with is, will God heal me? Uh, is it God's will for me to be healed? And we've already settled that. We know that God's will is for you to be healed. But not only that, so often people ask God to heal them. And then when they don't see the realization of it in their body, they still feel maybe the pain or the sickness or the hurt, or whatever it is. Then they think, well, God didn't heal me. No, He did. We are healed. And it's a very subtle difference. We're going to have a look at the Scriptures and see it, but I want to say it up front so we can address it, is that we're not the sick people trying to get healed. You are the healed person resisting sickness. I want you to see that because if I'm asking God to heal me, I'm asking for something that He has already given me. Because if I ask, it's implying that He hasn't given it to me. So in God's mind, He's given it to me. In my mind, if I'm asking Him, that He hasn't given it to me. We're bit of a, a bit of an impasse here. That, you know, God says He has given it. I say you haven't. Well, now who's right? Well, at the end of the day, I have to renew my mind to God's will. And Jesus did pray. He said in the Lord's Prayer, Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what is God's desire? What is His plan? What is His will for us? Let's have a look at Matthew chapter 10 again. Matthew 10, Jesus was busy training His disciples in the way of the kingdom. And in verse 1, He said, When He had called His twelve disciples to Him, He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast out and to heal all kinds of disease and all kinds of sicknesses. Now, notice this, He gave them power. He gave them power. What power is that? That's the authority. That's the anointing of God. That anointing that removes burdens and destroys yokes. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Remember, even Jesus, when He healed, you have a look at Acts chapter 10. Let, I, I quoted this yesterday, but I want you to read it. Let's go to Acts chapter 10 and have a look here at verse 38. How God anointed... Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. There we link the presence of the Holy Spirit with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Now, whose God are we talking about here? Which God? God was with him. Because we know Jesus is God. We know that. When he came to the earth, According to Philippians, he emptied himself. He came as no reputation and in the likeness of man. That's why it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, not Jesus of heaven. So on the earth, as a man, God anointed, the Father anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. His presence in Jesus is the power that gave Jesus the ability to heal. Okay, so that's the power of the healing. We go back now to Matthew chapter 10. He gave His disciples power, same Holy Spirit. That power, to He cast demons out to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Come down to verse 7. He says, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, what's the purpose of preaching? 
Remember the Bible says, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. So for someone to hear, they have to have the word spoken. So when he preaches the word of God, the word is imparted, faith comes to the hearer. Now, verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So they have received now power to heal. Freely received, freely give. When you are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit in your life. You have also received it freely. Now you have the right to freely give it as well. Let me show you this as well. Let's go to Luke chapter 9. This is a, another experience here. Let's see that's from Luke's perspective. Verse 1. Jesus called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all the demons and to cure diseases. He gave them power to cure diseases. You understand that? Look, read it. It says he gave them power to cure diseases. Now, we know healing wouldn't happen if it wasn't for Jesus. And I've said it myself and I'll say it again so that I keep myself humble under his hand. It's the hand of God that does the work. Jesus said, you will do the same works I did and greater. But he said, it's the Father in him who does the works. Some of will say, you know, uh, I'm not the healer, which is true. I'm not the healer. Jesus heals. But you notice that he, even though he is the healer, he gives us instruction to take that power and to heal the sick. So you and I have authority from him to heal. It says there, gave them power to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, and heal the sick. So not only are we told to go and preach the kingdom of God, we're told to preach and to heal. Those two are coupled together. So when we go out and we teach the word of God, and you lead people to Jesus, and teach them what the word is saying, every time we do that, we have at that moment, there's authority and power to heal sick. Let's go to chapter 10. Look at this. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also. So now this is beyond just the 12. He sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. He says in verse 2, The harvest truly is great. The laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So Jesus wants to increase his impact beyond just the 12 disciples. He then increases it to 70 and he sends them out as well, two by two. And he tells them to pray to raise other laborers. So can you see how the church is now, it's starting to grow and expand. At this point, they're not yet the church because Jesus hasn't yet paid for that. He still has to die and be raised from the dead but he's already preparing them in the way of the kingdom of God. So the discipleship ranks are growing and increasing. Now you come down to verse 8. Notice what he says here. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, listen to verse 9, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. So part of the demonstration to people that the kingdom of God is here in your midst, is when you go into a place and you see someone sick, you may have tried to invite them to church. You may have tried to give them pamphlets and books to read. Maybe you gave them a CD to listen to. Maybe you've tried to lead them to Jesus. But if you go in there one day and you see that they are sick, you go up to them and say, I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray and you will be healed in the name of Jesus. And you pray the prayer of healing on that person. And then they are healed. Look at that. It shows that the kingdom of God has come near to you. So when that person is healed, you can say to them, that's because of the kingdom of God. That's Jesus. This is who I'm trying to lead you to. This is who I'm trying to introduce you to. God loves you and he loves you so much that before you even call him Lord and Savior, he's healed you. So now that he's healed you, Come, let's, let's just thank him together. And you can lead that person to Jesus right there. 
Amen. So Jesus has given this authority. So you notice he went beyond the 12 disciples. The apostles were given power to heal. But then he put it into the 70. And he said, they must also raise laborers. And he said, when you're in a city, preach the word of God and you'll be able to heal the sick right there. Isn't that awesome to know that as a disciple, because as we've gone down the, the, the years and the ages, each disciple has led someone else to Jesus. He's discipled them as well. Remember Jesus said this when he told us to make disciples. He said, go and make disciples. One of the instructions in that was, teach them to observe all things that I've taught you. Well, what is all things? Well, he taught them how to pray. He taught them how to go to church. He taught them how to give. He taught them all these various things. And then he taught them how to heal the sick. Now you disciple that he's talking to there, go and make disciples and teach them all that I've taught you. Well, he taught them how to heal the sick. So they have to teach their disciples to do the same thing, which is in those 70. And then they have to teach their disciples, which is going to grow and expand. And through the ages, that's been taught all the way to where I have received that from my teacher. He taught me how to do this. And now I'm teaching you. You can do the same thing. You can take the same authority. Now, sometimes people say, yeah, well, you know, that's just the power that Jesus gave the apostles. I've already shown you that that's not so because it's gone to all the disciples. But we see in James chapter 5 where James has now taken this teaching and he's heard what Jesus said. Jesus has, by the time James writes this, let's go to this so long, James chapter 5, by the time that James writes this particular portion of Scripture, Jesus has already died. He's come back from the dead. He's alive, shown himself to them, and he's ascended back to heaven. Now the church is growing and expanding. Now they're planting churches all over. And now there's disciples everywhere. James writes here in James chapter 5, and he says in verse 14, Is there anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. They will pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. Hallelujah. So notice James gives the authority outside of just the 12 apostles. He says, if anyone's sick, you can ask for any elder, any leader in your church, somebody who's born again, in other words. If someone's born again and they've grown in the things of God, they can pray a prayer of agreement with you and that prayer will make sure that you are healed and you will be raised up. Notice it says prayer of faith will save the sick. That means you're delivered, you are healed. So we understand, once again, the prayer of faith. That's what I wanted to emphasize. Just take that, the prayer of faith. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we see here in verse 13. Since we have the same spirit of faith. Now, what is the spirit of faith? The spirit, yeah, is not referring to the Holy Spirit, the person. This is not referring even to you as a spirit being. This spirit, yeah, is the attitude. The same, like you have a team spirit. So the team spirit is the prevailing attitude in that team. So we have the same attitude, the spirit of faith, According to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. So remember Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So now what's happened? I've seen from the word of God. I've read from the word of God and I see that it is God's desire for not just Jesus to be able to heal, not just impart that to the apostles to heal, not just to the 70, but to raise disciples so that even the elders in the church are able to do it. And then beyond that is every person can walk in the power and the anointing. If you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit's power within you. I had to hear that. Now that you've heard it, you have received faith for that. I have faith that when I lay hands on somebody, they are healed. Now, having heard that, now I must speak it. I have to declare it. I have to start saying these things. I believe I've received it, and I can now speak it. So what are you going to speak? 
your healing. You say, I am healed. I said, but that's, oh, I don't know if I can say that because I'm still feeling sick. I can still feel my nose is hurting, my chest is hurting, I'm, my body's in pain, I can feel I'm sick. But remember what Joel said in chapter 3, verse 10, the B part of that verse says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. He didn't say, let the weak say, I'm weak, I'm struggling and battling, one day I will be strong. No, say, I am strong. How can I say that? Because God doesn't look at what's happening in your circumstance. He knows who you are and what Jesus paid for. Jesus paid for your healing. He gave you the right to be healed. Listen to this. Romans chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible's in the B part. God gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. In other words, if there's a storm happening around me, Jesus said, peace, be still. He didn't say, oh, there's a storm, I need to take the storm away. He called what he wanted. He wanted peace, and he said, that's what's going to happen. And so the storm had to fade away so that what Jesus said can be in place. Now, Ephesians 5 verse 1, Paul says to be imitators of God as dear children. Be imitators of God. What does imitators mean? The original Greek of that verse is mimetes, which literally is the word that we get mimic from. Please, if anybody's Greek out there, forgive my description, my, my pronunciation. I'm not Greek. I just read it in a dictionary. But it talks about mimicking God. Literally, what God does, He's saying, you do the same. Well, what does He do? He calls things that do not exist as though they did. Joel says, let the weak say, I am strong. So God sees you healed. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, God sent His word and healed them. He sent His word and healed. Notice the word word and healed and delivered them from their destruction. So His Word is what healed. Now, if they are healed, then they've been healed. So now let's tie this all together. The weak say, I am strong. Uh, the spirit of faith is having believed, I speak. What do I believe? I believe I am healed. God sent His Word and healed. And then God caused things that do not exist as though they did. Just because I don't experience and feel my healing doesn't mean it's not there. It is. The sickness and the symptoms are trying to overpower that. So I'm going to call myself healed. That's what I want. And so I'm going to imitate God. So by me saying, I am healed, even though I'm experiencing symptoms, even though I'm feeling it, by saying it, now that word can go into action and produce the healing that He's promised. Now if you go have a look at Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4. The Word says that Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of His peace was, a, the chastisement for our peace was upon Him. By His stripes we are healed. Notice it puts it in the present tense. So, Verse 4, that word griefs and sorrows, we'll have a look at that in more detail tomorrow. We're just about out of time for today. Those words, griefs and sorrows, talks about sickness, pain, disease. Jesus bore our sickness. He bore our pain on the cross. And because He was wounded, because of those wounds, the Bible says, by His wounds, look at verse 5, by His stripes, that's the wounds that He was afflicted with, by His wounds, we are healed. Not will be healed. We are healed. So the fact that Jesus paid the price for it, it's done. It's settled. And so you have been healed. I have been healed. The person that you're ministering healing to, Jesus already paid for that in, in, in full, in total. It's done. And completely paid for. You can accept it. And knowing that it has been paid for in full, we can now do just like Joel says in Romans 4.17 and Ephesians 5 verse 1, put all of that together, saying, God, according to your word, I may not feel it, I may not experience it, I may not see it right now, but I'm going to say what your word says. I am healed. 
Now say it right now. Just say it. I am healed. That settles it. Now I want to pray for you. Some of you may be already struggling with healing, but we're going to pray right after this, and we're going to see your miracle come to pass. Amen. Are you challenged with sickness or disease? Is it God's will to heal us? Did you know that God already sees you as healed? How do we get that healing? In this powerful three-part series, Alan Bagg teaches on God's desire for you to be healed. He sent His Word and healed them. What healed them? The Word. He shares practical ways to help Christians walk in divine health. This is what keeps me alive. This is what keeps me healthy. This is what keeps me whole. It's the life of God's Word. You will discover how to tap into God's healing power, how to receive healing through the Word of God, and the power of speaking healing over your body. That's what God uses, that power that's in you, to heal and to deliver and make whole. Get your series today by contacting us here at Allen Bag Ministries. Jesus demonstrated the kingdom of God by showing His will. You could literally look at it. Whatever Jesus did is the Father's will for us. Jesus said He doesn't do anything unless He's seen His Father do it. He doesn't say anything unless He heard His Father say it. And He showed by demonstration how healing was transferred into His apostles. And then they taught their disciples to do the same thing. God wants us to walk in His divine life, to experience the healing He paid for on the cross. Now, the only way I can step into that is to hear it from Him directly, from the Word of God. And that's why we put out these messages so that you can get a hold of them and listen to them over and over and over again. The more often you hear it, the more your faith aligns with what God desires for you. So get yours today so that you can raise up your faith level, walk in the fullness of God's healing for you, and be a vessel that God can work through to heal those that are in your family, friends, work colleagues, people around you, because that is God's will and desire for you. Amen. Now, maybe somebody today is experiencing problems with healing right now. I want to pray for you today. I know that you are healed. You are already delivered. And let's believe together that that is done. So, Father, I raise my dear friend before you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that the healing that you've already paid for is theirs. I declare them healed and whole on the basis of your word in the name of Jesus. And every sickness and every disease that's tried to attack that body, I destroy that work and cast you out of that body, out of that house in the name of Jesus. There it flees now, it's left your body, left that house, and right now speak life. There it is, there, there receive it. Yeah, you got it? Receive it, say, I receive it. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Just lift your hands right now and say, thank you, Father. I am healed. I receive it. I praise you for it. I thank you. It is mine. I am healed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. I tell you, as I prayed that, I heard it in my spirit. I sense it. There are people right now. You were healed right now. Pain just left you. Feel it. Feel your body now. <laughs> the pain is gone. Amen. I, there's somebody else. You're going to go visit a doctor this week, and they're going to look at you shocked and amazed and say, I don't understand this. Or, where, you had this thing, and now it's gone. That's yours. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. As a lady, you have been trying to fall pregnant right now. Yeah, that's just been healed. You're going to find out in a few days' time that you're pregnant in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God has done so many works. Listen, we want to hear about it. Please write to me. I want people to know that what God said is yes and amen is yes and amen. And we're going to celebrate the testimonies. Many of you were just touched now. I, I, there's a lot of people out there right now. You are pain free. Please let us know. Just call us on the phone even. Write to us because we want to hear about it. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Jesus praise. Now listen, that's all we got time for today. We're going to carry on tomorrow. I look forward to being with you there. This is Alan Bag reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. For many years, we have seen the Word of God reach into many of our partners' lives and turn circumstances and situations around to God's glory. If the Lord has touched your life through Alan Bag Ministries, Contact us at these details and be an encouragement to someone needing their breakthrough. Call us, write to us or leave a message online. But know that the blood of Jesus and your testimony will help you overcome the power of the enemy. Allen Bag Ministries is online. On our website, allenbagministries.org, you can find out more about who we are, what we believe and what we stand for. You will also learn more about what the ministry consists of, our vision, our focus, and of our main involvements in the community. On weekends, you will be able to participate in our church services by enjoying the live streamed services or our special event services streamed from the Bay Christian Valley Church. Allen Bag Ministries also have a large database of related teaching material, so you can further your study on the topics handled on our programs. If there are some things you require answers for, our library of related teaching materials will assist you tremendously in gaining understanding in those areas. We have also made an opportunity for you to get involved in our projects and vision through our online giving facilities on both our allenbagministries.org website as well as the Bay Christian Family Church website. There are many ways that Allen Bank Ministries would like to assist you to succeed and prosper in your ministry. So visit us online and together we can make a difference in this world. Allen Bank Ministries is making this week of programs available for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, you are now able to purchase this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format, so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details. Yeah,